Hey, what's happening everyone? I just thought I uh, would do a series on painting a brass locomotive since I've got two of them to do. And if you get it out on YouTube, there's actually not a lot of uh, tutorials. I found a few, but not, not too many. Uh, this is my second one that I've painted. The first one was a, uh, was a West Side, the K27. Put a new motor and such into that. Uh, so this is my K37, just getting it ready for paint. Um, so what I'm going to do first is uh, use a media blaster to blast all the varnish because these have some pretty bad varnish on it. And you want to be able to get the uh, primer and the paint to stick. So all I'm doing is prepping that. So basically, in order to do that, it's just like uh, painting these. you got to totally disassemble them. So right now, all I'm doing, as you see I started, was just putting tape on the wheels that way uh, I'm not so worried about the blasting but for when I go to prime it and paint it uh, it makes it a lot easier I've done it the other way where you go back and clean it afterward but it just seems to be a lot messier and never gets right so and this is just a couple minutes extra um, as far as the locomotive taking it apart um, I take them completely apart, all the drivers and everything, gearbox, out, uh, and I just usually get like a tray or something to set them all in, all the parts, that way you don't lose them. And uh, because when if you try and paint these, you can paint over this, but you run the risk of the paint getting in everywhere and then never being able to really get the thing to run right. Because uh, I can go back and weather these and make them look uh, darker. Um, but usually, I haven't taken this one apart, but usually you can take all the running gear out and separate it from the frame pretty easily. So um, I'm going to go ahead and prep this one, and then uh, we'll get uh, ready on the uh, next step. So probably for many, this is probably the most challenging or daunting part of... Uh, doing a steam locomotive at least for painting and uh just grabbing some tools here and i agree yeah it's uh the first time i did it it was pretty pretty nerve-wracking um but once you get in here and start taking stuff apart it's not bad the main thing is just remembering where everything goes and then uh organizing everything so like i said i've got some other little bins like all the screws, real small screws, and then like the driver springs I'll put in here. Um, most of this stuff can be reordered, like the driver springs you can get from Northwest Shoreline. Um, but like these cap screws that hold the axles in, I have no idea where you get one of those. So those are the ones that you really gotta be careful with and not try and lose. Um, So the main thing with working on anything is having the right tools. Um, one of the ones I had to do for those, for these right here, is actually I ground a one of these little cheap screwdrivers. I don't know if it'll focus, but yeah, I ground it down. That way it'd fit in there because it's a real fine tip, and you could buy, probably buy you know one like this, but. I have some that are pretty close, but they weren't as fine. Um, and then mainly the other thing too, I found that these angled tweezers work out a lot better when doing this. So anyways, like I said, the first thing is just to start pretty much taking anything out and apart. Um, like a lot of this stuff just comes right out. And I've taken this thing apart at countless times. Um, so like these things, the trailing and the lead truck, I'll actually uh, blast these. I actually need to tape these. Um, I'll do that in a little bit. But we'll just show the disassembly of this. Um, and what you want to do is they usually have a main screw <clears throat> for the front. And 
then this one just has the two screws to the rear here. Some of them will have them down off to the side, which is a pain to get them in and out. separate off the bottom half. Um, and this one, all the wiring I did, I made it so I can remove it. See one of the steam domes actually comes out from that. So there is a screw, but I actually use that to hold down my wiring harness. There's usually a weight in the boiler. It's just a regular wood screw. So you can see the plug that I did and then this whole thing in theory it should come apart so now it's just the, the top half and then you can see all my my wiring for the lights and then there's the fiber optic tubes and then there's the I put that in the frame. Um, so yeah, there's the fiber optic tube and then there's the plug for it. So the top side's done. I'll just go ahead and screw this sand dome or the steam dome back in. Having these domes removable is nice, especially when you go back to if you're painting something that has different color domes than the rest. So you can actually remove those and paint them separately. Because trying to mask that is pretty hard. And most of the models that I've done have that have these screws to remove the steam domes, so. There's the top half. So there's not much that I'm going to do to this. When I go to paint it, I'm going to uh, use the liquid mask by uh, Microscale and use cover up the, the bell and then the whistles. That way they stay br the brass color. Um, but, but I'm going to blast it first so that way it's the shiniest it can be. So this is pretty much ready uh, for the media blasting. So I'll set that aside. I also uh, can remove the motor. And this motor, I did a 
it came with the big open frame one and I changed out the uh, Northwest Shortline motor. I built the plate for it that I just screwed into the, the frame here. It's just the silicone tube. You can just pull it right off. You can see the frame or the mount that I built. It was just out of a piece of brass. I like to put all the screws back in if I can. Just one less thing to lose. Now let's undo these. This is the uh, the drawbar. It does carry electrical current from the uh, the tender. And this one just wants to spin around. see with these they just have the insulator and then there should be a matching some sort of insulation on the top this one came with it looked like a fiber washer from like a KD coupler or a not a KD coupler but a <clears throat> they make the uh, washers for the trucks as you can see, this spring is completely smashed in here, but um, I believe this is being carried over by the uh, the one of the plugs, but I could be wrong. Um, then now here's the, I would say probably the most tedious part, but it's just taking all this apart. Um, so... Just start with the, we'll start with the drivers, and if I can find the screwdriver, so I've already, <clears throat> I've already gone through these and loosened them all, and you can see how tiny that screw is. And these are actually stuck when uh, I got the, first got it and took it all apart. Because a lot of times you're going to have to adjust the mechanisms on these and so I had to go in and just clean everything up. So it has these cover plates so I want to paint these. So I'm, Put some masking tape upside down over there. And this is going to be the, the same steps over and over. So I'll just go ahead and stop it and uh, show you how when I go to remove the drivers. Alright, so I got all the, uh, the cover plates off. So it's a matter of just lifting up the drivers. And they ride on these square bearing blocks, which can kind of make it difficult sometimes to get them out. Actually, I think I might need to... I've never taken this one apart this far, so it looks like I have to take these screws out here. And hopefully they're not stuck. It's definitely a weird screw. Good luck finding that.
That one was kind of stuck, but if you get them when they're stuck like that, you really got to put a lot of downward pressure. Because these are all brass and they'll strip super easy. So here's one that's stuck in there. Let's see if I can pull it and there you go oh wow so that separates there it's a good thing I'm recording this that way I can remember how to do it Just gotta be careful not to bend any of these rods. All right, so the frame is now clear, so you don't really have to take it any further down than this. Um, so I'm gonna put tape over. I gotta get all the oil off here, and then I'll put tape over the uh, the slide bars there. Um, and then I'm probably going to tape all the insides here just because this is where you get your electrical contact from the drivers. So again, I'll just use like the strips of tape, clean it with some alcohol because uh, I think there's lube in there. Um, and then mask it. And then the driver springs, they sit in these blocks here. These are the bearing blocks. And see, one just fell out there. So, like I said, these ones you can actually find replacements pretty easily for most locomotives through Northwest Shoreline. You may have to cut them. Oh, well, there goes that one. Um, yeah, like I said, you may have to cut them to size, but at least there's some sort of replacement available and you may actually want to replace them because sometimes these are either too stiff or just completely worn out depending on the age and the manufacturer so um, so after this the next step is going to be blasting so I'll go ahead and uh, finish this up and then we'll go out to the garage all right so I got it disassembled and uh, I made a pretty uh homemade uh, uh, blasting booth because this stuff is nasty if you've ever spray uh, blasted anything um, just a cardboard box that I found and uh, I've got my shop back hooked up back here this is the uh, Harbor Freight it's a copy of the Pache Air Eraser um, it's just the you can get these things for about 20 bucks at Harbor Freight just using it's a white ox white aluminum oxide abrasive that's a 220 grit this stuff will last forever um, main thing is just keeping it dry and uh, so I've got gloves on and then just also using a mask for the uh, particulate so what I'll do is uh, it's gonna get real loud here um, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the shop back on and then uh, start blasting
All right, so that's all uh, done now. Didn't show the whole thing because it's kind of repetitive. Um, but from now on, you pretty much have to handle these with gloves because any oil that you get on here is just going to recontaminate the surface. Um, so you can see it's no longer shiny. It's kind of got that dull finish. Uh, it's just from the abrasive. It's just giving it a nice little pitted surface and that the uh, primer will stick to it real nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to blow these off with a air gun and then after that um, probably wipe them down real good probably either with some alcohol or something else to make sure I got all the rest of the abrasive off because that's the last thing you want in your paint. Um, and then from there I'm going to go ahead and prime it. I'll uh, show you guys the uh, priming process. I'm going to have to change out this. I'll put up my uh, spray booth that I just got. First time to get to use it. So I'll show you guys that in a sec. Alright, so I'm getting ready to uh, prime here. So like I said, this is the stuff that I use to cover up <clears throat> anything that you don't want painted. It's, it's kind of like glue, but it peels off later. Uh, the only caveat with this stuff is it has to be a, a non-water based because I believe it is some sort of like PVA type uh, that the water will eat at it. Um, but you just use it to cover. Like I put it on the bell and then the whistle. You want to put it on real thick, I found, because the thinner you put it on, the harder it is to actually get off later. And then I just put a couple dabs inside the, uh, the lights there. Um, any little bits that get covered later, I mean, I can go ahead and just touch that up, uh, brush painting, because a lot of this stuff's going to have to get brush painted anyways. So what I'm using for my primer is I'm using Tamiya Surface Primer. Um, I've never used the fine before. I've used the gray, which is the regular. So in, yeah, if you're painting a dark surface, you should prime with a dark color, but there are no good dark primers other than if you use an automotive. Uh, you can use an automotive paint uh, my recommendation is to spray it into a can, maybe thin it a little, then airbrush it, uh, because if you're not going to get a good fine spray out of a, a, a spray can. These have a really good tip on them. I don't know if you've ever used them before, but they have a really good spray pattern. So you could probably use one of these and put it on a regular spray can. It might work, but I know this paint is a lot thinner than uh, the other stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and start painting here. Um, I may record some of this, I just don't want to get my camera uh, full of paint.
So I had a bit of a learning experience. Um, apparently I didn't clean the surface of this good enough with uh, the alcohol, so I actually went back and used lacquer thinner to clean it. Uh, the other thing too is I tried using the white Tamiya surface primer. Didn't really like it. So I'm gonna go back to the gray. Um, I don't know why the white was different, but so I'm gonna go ahead and just use this and see how well this works. Um, so I had to actually strip all the white primer off of this because it was starting to get the fish eye bubble, which means that I didn't clean it well enough. So let's see how this goes. So this is actually going a lot better than the white. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera off and I'm gonna just finish priming the stuff. All right, so the primer's been applied and this coat actually went on pretty good. Let's see all the pieces. So they're gonna dry for about a day or so, uh, especially because it's not really warm here. So I may actually, I got a small little oven that I may uh, bake some of this paint on. Uh, but I'll uh, stop it at this one and uh, call this part one. And then the uh, next part is uh, I'll be uh, painting all the graphite stuff. So all this here and then the, uh, the firebox. So um, yeah, till the next uh, video when I start getting paint. See you guys.